All right. Hello, everyone. Good evening. Welcome back to Nighttime Astro Live, where we're tuning into the cosmos, getting our wisdom downloads, taking them into our uh, rejuvenation space, where we, when we fall asleep, we go to the astral plane, we dream, we meet our guides, our teachers, and we learn about ourselves. And we get super refreshed to begin the day, uh, the following day when we wake up all refreshed, rejuvenated from the, the night sleep that you went into with a special intention of absorbing the wisdom of the cosmos. So here is the series of where I gather together at night and talking about the stars. And the reason why I'm doing that is I want you to take that insights, those insights and information into your dream space so that I can um, help teach you at a, at a very, uh, deep and subconscious level to make those changes that you would love to make. If you're new to the Lunar Ladies, welcome. My name is Shannon Lemaire, and I am the owner and operator of Lunar Ladies, and you are in our free community where uh, I can offer you the wisdom of the cosmos, and you can also uh, have, schedule readings, work one-on-one -on -one with me, get charts and reports, and take courses. So all that more is located at LunarLadies.com. All right. Hi, Debbie. Welcome. Thanks for being here. Good evening to you. Welcome. So let's jump in. Let's get going and start chatting and uh, about Mercury going direct. And Mercury goes direct at 1 a.m. here in California on the night or the early morning hours of June 3rd. So uh, that's in California time. So if you're on the East Coast, it'll be around 4 a.m. in the morning of June 3rd. So if you're here on the West Coast or even in Hawaii, it'll take place uh, at nighttime, June 2nd. Okay, now why is it important? Why are we so curious about Mercury and uh, him changing directions? So about two to three times a year, Mercury will go into a retrograde phase, meaning it's, it's slowing down so that it can make an elliptical turn as it, as it uh, moves around the sun. Now, Mercury is the closest planet we recognize to the sun. And so its pathway is the inside track, right? So it's, it's faster and this planet moves faster. Then we do on Earth, we have a further elliptic to travel on. So one Earth year for us is 365 days. One Mercury year is 88 days. And who has heard that saying around the world in 88 days? That is directly referencing Mercury and a Mercury year. So Mercury is very important to us here on Earth. Hi. Hi, Sherry. Welcome. We've got a birthday girl uh, in the uh, coming up on Mercury going direct day, June 3rd. Happy birthday. Return of the sun to Sherry. Also want to give a shout out to Nikki Moondog. Today is her birthday, her return of the sun. So I'm so excited for our Gemini sisters. We've got Jenny Miller. Uh, got some other soul sisters with these early June Gemini birthdays. <laughs> Welcome and happy birthday. Hi, Teresa. Hi, Jenny. Welcome. So uh, wonderful to have you here. And thank you for joining. Uh, I was a few minutes late because I had some noise in the house. I didn't want that noise to be on the live. <laughs> okay, so we're talking Mercury. Now, Mercury is, um, the is an inner planet, meaning it's close to the Earth, has to do with, uh, really affects us on our internal landscape, as opposed to when we look at the outer planets, meaning further out from the sun, we call those the transcendent planets, starting with Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, Pluto. Those are the outer planets because they take a long time to move through our chart. But the inner planets will move through our chart much more quickly. And so we have Mercury, which rules uh, in Gemini, rules speech, thoughts, words, behaviors. It's like that toddler phase. So when our mind starts to get independent from um, our, our parents or that newborn self, and we start speaking. Right. And so that one of the, the guide, the guidance was to try to go back and, and find out what your first words were, because right? that will give you a focus uh, of your baby self. What was the focus? 
that you are so curious about and tracking in your life. That will give you an insight into how your mind works. Now, when you go into your natal chart, you can really decipher and understand the personal frequency of, of your lower mind, that's Gemini, Mercury, higher mind is Sagittarius and Jupiter. Uh, by the sign, its degree and its house placement in your chart. And then of course, any aspect and planets that will either you know conjunct, sextile, square, trine, oppose, yeah, lots of relationships. But you can simply start out by finding where Mercury is in your chart and looking at the sign that it's in. That is plenty of info. And then take it one step further, find out the house, because the house will tell you what part of your world is this taking place. Mercury says, I'm, I'm talking about how your mind functions, how you learn, um, what are your typical uh, behaviors and, and patterns and habits. And then the sign will give you the costume that your, your mind is wearing. <laughs> it's really fun when you break it all down. All right, so Sherry's on it. She has discovered her natal Mercury as a good Gemini sun and moon that she is. She quickly got that Mercury, right? Because she is ruled by Mercury. So every time Mercury is doing a retrograde cycle, everybody's Mercury gets activated, meaning everybody's lower mind is getting a reboot, a refresh. So retrograde means turning away, looking back, reviewing, slowing down, kind of like if you were into computers, it'd be like you're defragging the hard drive of the mind. It's a great time to get a refresh of how your mind works. Now with Sherry, who uh, so wonderfully has shared her natal Mercury being in Taurus in the 10th house. So for Sherry, this is really interesting because for her birthday, Mercury goes direct. Where is it going direct? 26 degrees Taurus. So Sherry's having this, wow, kind of uh, a feeling of what, what was going on with Mercury when she was born. So this is a real reminiscent uh, vibration that Sherry can really tune into that natal imprint of her Mercury as it, where it is today. That's where I was thinking of you, Rochelle. I'm like, wait, you're a June 3rd sister too, having a birthday. Happy birthday to you, Rochelle. <laughs> you get Mercury retrograde in yours too. All right, Teresa has discovered her Mercury at 29 Taurus. So this Mercury going direct is especially potent for uh, Sherry and Teresa because um, of, the, of the proximity of the natal Mercury in the chart and where it is today and what's going on. So let's bust out how we can apply this knowledge to these natal Taurian Mercury uh, soul sisters in the house. Now, I just wanna point out that Teresa's natal Mercury at 29 Taurus is in the Pleiades. So if we track 29 degrees Taurus in the sky, we will see the beautiful seven sisters. So that's um, a, a really cool thing for Teresa to know because you can start contacting that Palladian uh, wisdom story. Who, who are the Pleiades? What do they mean? Track their, the indigenous peoples. So many people have a creation story around the Pleiades. Like go find out what that is and feel in your body what you resonate with. So our current Mercury going direct is at 26 degrees Taurus. So that's in the heart of the Pleiades, which is 29 to 20, 25 to 29 degrees. And what I think is really interesting, speaking of indigenous peoples around the world and having that star system, the Pleiades, as part of their cosmology, their creation stories. Because the Sabian symbol is a, an Indian woman, and, uh, and these symbols are, cut, are from the 1920s, so the languaging is a little bit dated. Uh, but this is an indigenous woman who's uh, selling beads, selling beads. So if we close our eyes for a moment, we can use your, the power of your imagination, which is really opening up that third eye and connecting with opening up the stimulating the pineal gland. So close your eyes for a moment and imagine a beautiful indigenous woman. And she's selling, right, having offering. Uh, something from her culture, beads, like jewelry, 
maybe something that's from that culture or where that culture is from, you know, these beads or jewelry that they make. So something that represents something. So just be curious, like what comes up in your mind? Like, where does your third eye automatically open and see, right? Sometimes for some of us, if we have a really deep resonance or it might even be that we are in a today in an indigenous cultural uh, family, that's our heritage. Um, whatever comes up for you will have specific meaning. Some of us will remember it very quickly and it could even be an indication that you had a lifetime uh, in an, as this indigenous type person. But when we look more uh, openly, kind of getting a bigger picture of that symbol where that's representing the 26 degree of Taurus, you start to open up to this indigenous wisdom, this connection to beauty, this offering of one's culture, one's spiritual nature, one's uh, heritage, offering it for others to you know, put on their bodies, uh, you know, enjoy with them. It's like the artisan, the, those beautiful pieces of, um, of things that we can, that we might be naturally attracted to. So a good example is like when I close, when I look at this symbol and I close my eyes, I see like a Navajo woman and she has the turquoise because that's what I love. I think that that is so beautiful. And I love the South, the, the native people of the Southwest. Um, there's such a beautiful uh, spiritual connection that I feel when I um, tune into uh, who they are and that part of our United States. So what we can bring into our lives around the significance of this Mercury around our mind and how it's working is there's a, a, a Mercury is pointing to connecting with indigenous wisdom. And, and a, a good way to open that door to pique your curiosity is to look at the jewelry of indigenous cultures that you resonate with and find out, you know, get pictures of them look at them, you might even own pieces, wear them. There's something of the vibratory nature of those natural stones or natural you know, art. It could be you know, stones like beads or it could be uh, fabrics or te textiles or you know, like rugs or uh, clothing or jewelry. So when you put it on this week, there's something in there for you to connect with. Uh, Rochelle says, I keep seeing a native woman giving pearls made of the galaxy and the universe. <laughs> Leave it to the Gemini soul sisters to pull that one from the cosmos. That is so beautiful. Uh, Rochelle, I think we need you to do some communication with this galactic woman giving us pearls of wisdom made from this, the galaxy. I think we need to know more. <laughs> Will you please communicate more? So if you are getting this experience, similar to Rochelle, who's tuning in and really getting a hello from this energy, uh, share what you are getting, right? Share, uh, you know, go deeper into that because that could be a spirit guide. That could be, you know, it's an emanation of this frequency that's in play. So let me go ahead and share my screen and let's take a look I created a chart for the moment of Mercury going direct. Now, before I share my screen, I want to remind everyone that uh, there's a wobble when Mercury changes direction, whether it's direct or retrograde. So we want to be aware. And it's starting to open up now because Mercury has slowed down. It was already going slow and retrograde, but he slowed down because he's going to change direction. And so we have this kind of, whoa, what's happening so Taurus energy reminds us to ground to get rooted to connect with nature uh to really get uh grounded in your self-worth and what do you value about yourself and watch the inner dialogue right Mercury is communication retrograde insight so the inner communication around your value and your self-worth and your deservings so just give that as well a hello over the next three days. Because the day before Mercury goes, uh, changes direction, the day of and the day after, I call that the wobble phase. So you just want to be 
aware that things are shifting <laughs> and respond accordingly by staying hydrated, being grounded, go on slow, no rush. Everything will be there in a couple of days. Just keep you know, breathing and grounding and connecting to the self, listening. Mercury likes to listen in retro. Okay, so let me share the screen and I wanna show you the uh, astrology chart so we can start to again, part of nighttime astrology is taking this into the dream space and getting comfortable with looking at an astrology chart. Trust me, it's not that hard. So again, during this Mercury, uh, uh, this Mercury, a new moon in Gemini, rather, Mercury time is uh, I want you to be feeling into what are you curious about? So if you are curious about astrology and you want to start learning and possibly mastering the art of astrology, uh, start here with me, looking at charts. And then I have a course that you can, an on-demand course where you can uh, learn how to read charts starting with your own. <laughs> That's the magic. And, um, and for Teresa, <laughs> I was thinking maybe in the fall, I'll teach that course live. But I'm also going to be offering the on-demand course at a super, super birthday special uh, for my birthday that's coming um, at the end of the month, June 24th. So two options. You can wait till the fall where I'll teach it live. Or you can get it on demand right now at the super sale price <laughs> as a birthday gift. Okay. And also for all them Gemini birthdays out there. <laughs> okay. So here we go. We got the chart. And what's one thing that I noticed right away? And it's the big blue triangle in the room. <laughs> We've got a water trine happening. And not even just a blue triangle, but it has a tail with the lunar node. So we have a water trine kite. And these are rare alignments that don't happen that often. And I love seeing a water trine kite, meaning a harmonic blessing and um, uh, that we can tune into for our wellness is being offered to us by Mercury. So we say, thank you, Mercury. Wow, you are so great to go direct at 1 a.m. <laughs> On June 3rd, when these other planets were forming a trine in the element of water, and it's got a tail, so it's a kite, it can fly, right? Discovery. So who's involved with this water trine? We have the south node at 22 degrees, Scorpio. So this is unwinding the past. Now, uh, just as a little bit of current events, we had, uh, I thought, really interesting today that we had, um, if you've been watching the Johnny Depp Amber Heard defamation trial, there was a verdict today. And um, it also is National Narcissistic Abuse Day, accordingly. <laughs> okay, but look at that, um, no matter where you are and how, on the spectrum of how you feel about who's right, who's wrong, and you know who's both right, who's both wrong, right? I just thought it was interesting timing that that's occurring while the sun is in, or the moon is in Cancer, because Cancer is very nurturing. The south node is unwinding things held secret, uh, especially or in regards to abuse. It's the revelation of secrets or even hidden agendas. And when we look at the outcome, there's a strong, you know, uh, awareness brought to light, like what was brought to light. And what was brought to light is that men can be abused. Abusers can be women. Um, people can try to destroy other people and uh, with any means necessary. You know, uh, if you kind of just look at it at face value, it's a very Mercury South, or a very South Node in Scorpio revelation, right? Because that's what the South Node does is unwind bound energy from the past and especially patterns. And we're looking at Scorpio, which is seduction, uh, control, possessiveness, uh, abuse, sexual and partner, because this is intimacy, intimate partner violence. That's why I thought it was really interesting. They used the term in throughout the court, uh, the, the case was this IPV, intimate partner 
violence, which is very Scorpio South Node. I'm like, might as well be saying Scorpio South Node up there. <laughs> I'd love to be on a, a panel talking about this from an astrological point of view. Okay, but notice it's a trine, so there's healing. And, you know, when I, myself, as I was, you know, curious about what was happening with that particular uh, souls in, um, and what they were sharing with the collective, like so uh, vulnerably was that um, that there was this energy of, uh, he, you know, I was not enjoying watching either side suffer. Like that was painful. I didn't want, you know, you don't want something bad to happen to anybody, right? So I felt that the timing of the, of the jury being able to deliver pretty quickly a verdict with this auspicious energy of a water trine is offering blessings for healing on both sides, healing for people who were you know, directly or indirectly affected, you know, bringing things up, of, you know, kind of, there's going to be a big call for healing, especially in that dimension of intimate partner violence, uh, in the dimension of you know, narcissistic type of abuse or personality disorder. Uh, that's something that needs to be talked about. And those two brave souls on a soul level were very courageous to do that for the collective, in my opinion. Anyway, I could do a whole live on that. <laughs> Let's go back to the water trine. So we have the south node in Scorpio aligning with Neptune in Pisces, the, the ruler of that sign, moving into an alignment with the moon, the waxing moon in Cancer all emotional water clearing cleansing of the psyche of secrets of you know, that control energy and what's guiding it is uh is the lunar nodes so the north node in taurus says you know let us move this energy from a wellness state towards a a, a, a redemption of uh self-worth and self-value and if you find yourself in the darkness of the shadowscape of Scorpio, know that there is uh, healing possible. There's a new beginnings with the Taurus energy by you know, healing these uh, very early form childhood um, patterns around one's sense of worth and um, value. Now, one of the things, again, going back to Amber Heard was, you know, a lot of kind of analyst people were looking at her behavior and different things that they noticed, and they could tell behaviorally that she would get very triggered by sharing stories around being rejected and feeling rejected. And so that is a major energy of the Scorpio South Node, the rejection energy. So again, there's room and there's space and there's uh, a welcome and there's an invitation for a deep, deep core level soul healing. Okay, so that's what this is being guided by, that Mercury is giving you as a blessing. And then of course, you can always locate your water element houses, Scorpio, Pisces, Cancer, where this water trine is taking effect in your personal vibration. So looking through the, the lens of the microscope of, with the Sabian symbols, the moon is bringing you this um, vision or this visual of a woman throwing a dark mantle over her shoulder. So this is like, okay, I'm, I'm looking at this kind of things that are hidden in the dark and I'm putting on my sh over my shoulder. Like I'm ready to either move through an old debilitating pattern or I'm ready to kind of utilize my gift of hindsight, remember, because going over the shoulder, meaning behind into the back, I can use hindsight as a way to heal, as a way to nurture myself. So intuition, hindsight, what's this experience teaching me in my life? How do I nourish myself from what's happening? The South Node is talking about transformation. It's the image of a rabbit metamorphosizing into a fairy. And this is taking that animal drive and transforming it into that magical beingness, right? So we can transform um, uh, with this power. 
Neptune is saying that, um, I thought this was really interesting. It talks of the new moon that divides influences. So here we are, the new moon happened on Monday. So Neptune is saying, yes, go with this new moon. It is helping you be able to discern fact from fiction, you know, truth from lies, uh, you, helping you clear the fog of illusion, like allow this new moon in Gemini to clear the mind. And then the North node is uh, showing up as an image of a jewelry shop, the preciousness. What, what's your inner jewels? Wear the jewels because uh, Mercury is going direct at the native woman selling the jewelry, selling the beads. So the jewelry shop is wear them. See your worth, know your value. Like you are a jewel in the cosmos. Okay, so that's Mercury retrograde chart, its essence. I, to me, that felt like the gift coming from this time. Now, what's interesting as we move into Saturn going direct the following day, notice that the moon is getting a yod or is, is an unstable uh, quintex from Saturn. Saturn is going, uh, follows this energy in the, in the portal void, the wobble, changing directions, right? So then we go, okay, God and spirit needs to be part of this equation. Oh, that's beautiful, Jenny. I like to imagine my chakras lined up as gems. Oh, gorgeous. Thank you for sharing that visual. I like that. I, I resonate. I want to adopt that, that beautiful practice. Thank you for that. It's beautiful. So Saturn is saying, with, in relationship to the moon, we have to ground something highly spiritual here. So the moon, you know, depending on your core self, and your sense of self, if you don't have that grounded and centered and being nourished, that celestial stem grounded and being nourished in this life, then it can be reactive. It can feel very hurt. It can feel very shunned. It can be the, 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 the child that is ignored and neglected and you know sad and abused in that emotional space. That's the moon. Saturn is you know the ruling the judge, the, the verdict, and, and if we kind of compare it to the, the court case. Also, you know, Saturn is the inner master. Aquarius is the future. So if you want to stabilize your emotional future, you got to understand that um, everything that is, it is available for you as your future that you were given and blessed with at birth, you got to stabilize that, especially if you have mental patterns, emotional patterns from early childhood that keep you locked in a state of not feeling like you're good enough, not, uh, not enough in any level, right? Okay, so let's go into, uh, speaking of Saturn, let's go to the Saturn chart which is going to have a lot of everything kind of still the same because it's only like a, you know, about 24 hours later, but the moon changes. Uh, also notice here that Venus is at six degrees Taurus and Mars is at six degrees air. So speaking of inner planets, Mercury being how our mind functions, Mars being how our inner masculine energy functions and, uh, Venus being how our inner feminine energy functions. So those three work uh, very, um, you want to keep them in a good, healthy balance. So I thought it was interesting that they're both six degrees um, on the Mercury going direct. Now this is going to apply this, apply this in, in about five days. <laughs> That'll be my next uh, nighttime astro live. 6-6, six, six, June 6, Monday is a 6-6 six, six gateway. We are in a 2022 year. 20 plus 22, 24, 2 plus 4 equals 6. <laughs> so this 6-6 six, six gateway on uh, Monday is going to be really interesting. And we're already getting the planets lining up, holding court at those 6 degrees. Very interesting. So just kind of note to self. Hmm. Curious about that. Okay, so now I'm going into the Saturn retrograde chart. So when does it happen? June 4th, 
here in California at 2.48 p.m. So if you are on the East Coast, it will be at 5.48 p.m. So evening time and late afternoon here. Whereas Mercury was like, I'm doing all this at 1 a.m. <laughs> or in the middle of the night. Okay, so notice that the uh, water trine has disappeared. It is not in effect for the Saturn retrograde. So Saturn, again, is um, rules the 10th house and, and the ancient ruler of the 11th house, meaning Capricorn and Aquarius. Aquarius is our crown chakra. Saturn is our bones. And so Saturn is the ancient ruler of both signs. But the modern ruler of Aquarius is Uranus. So we're gonna look at Uranus in, as we look at, okay, what's this retrograde about? Now, Saturn um, rules your, again, your inner mastery. It's how you show up as an adult in the world. You really don't, your brain isn't fully formed until you have your Saturn return, which is around age 28. Okay, so that's his year. A Saturn year around the sun is 28 years. So give or take a few years on either side. So let's look at, uh, I just have to find out when Saturn goes direct. He will go direct on October 23rd. So his retrograde is about five months long. Where Mercury's retrograde is three weeks. So notice the difference. <laughs> All right, Jenny has discovered her Saturn. Oh my God, Saturn is right on my natal Venus 26 Aquarius. All right, so when, so if you discover that you have a transit in you, a currently moving planet that is hovering right over a natal planet, it's called a conjunction, and it's about starting a new cycle. It's intensifying some type of new cycle. So Jenny, if you and I were doing a one-to-one -one, um, astrology reading together, I would talk about, okay, you are getting a 28 year cycle with the Saturn Venus energy. <laughs> and you right now have five months to kind of review before this 28 year cycle begins. What do you need to know in regards to your inner feminine energy, right? Those are the kinds of questions I would be guiding you to answer and to think about. Okay, Sherry says, interesting. I have both Saturn and Mercury in the 10th house. Yes, Sherry, that is very, very auspicious for you because Saturn rules the 10th house. So anytime anybody has Saturn in the 10th house, that's lucky. You got the ruler there. So you've got a good head for business. <laughs> and then you look at Mercury, ruler of your moon and sun, says, I also I have a good head for business and I can talk about it. And the Taurus says, and I can be very successful when I know my worth and value when I am out in the world talking to people about something I feel really passionate about. And I'm excited about it. I'm curious about it. It's working for me. But it's changing my life. So when Sherry talks about uh, things in her business that were life-changing for her, she's very successful. When she talks about how her worth has increased, her financial wellness has increased, then she has, she's emerging with the power of that planetary placement that was given to her at her birth. All right, so Teresa has discovered Saturn is 22 degrees, Aquarius is 11. Okay, wait, Teresa, back it up, sister. <laughs> you got two things going. You got Mercury on your Mercury. You got Saturn on your Saturn. And we talked about this in Teresa's one-to-one -one because she's like, Shannon, I need a one-to-one -one because I, I'm, gonna, I'm in my Saturn return. And the second Saturn return is the one that's so awesome. <laughs> so I would review that, that session recording, Teresa, just to refresh your mind as Saturn goes retrograde. There's something in that five months because I know you're manifesting something awesome. So there's going to be Saturn's going to be helping you redefine what's happening now in the vibratory field so that the future matches. Yes, that's what I would do. <laughs> I love it too. Thank you for sharing that, Teresa. You're so wonderful. Hi, Janice. Welcome. Okay, so Janice has discovered her natal Saturn is retrograde when she was born. Okay, so our dear Janice was born under a Saturn retrograde. 
So that's a mark of an old soul on the chart. So hello, old soul. <laughs> 12 degrees, galactic healer degree. Aries, 11,000, Saturn. Strong archetype. Yeah, Janus is a really good, like, if you ever wanted a good boss in your life, you would go, can I have someone, can I have Janice please? <laughs> she's smart, she's cool, and she knows what she's doing. <laughs> yeah, totally. Hi, Nancy, welcome, welcome, welcome. What are we learning? We are talking right now, we just got done talking about Mercury going direct on Friday, June 3rd. And now we're talking about Saturn going retrograde on June 4th. So we're talking about our Saturn. So Nancy, find your Saturn. Because <laughs> it's going to get an activation, um, especially, you know, look for your Aquarius world house, because that's where Saturn is. And then you're going to look at your natal Saturn, where it's in the chart, because this is our inner master. And we want that, we have a five month um, internship starting on Saturday with our inner mastery. All right. <laughs> yeah, everybody needs a solar return. Yes, thank you, Sherry. We just got done with Sherry's birthday reading. I'm so excited for her. And she was like, she had a, a wonderful choice to make, like, where do I want to be on my Saturn return? And she chose wisely. <laughs> With some, we, we got to look at two separate charts to help her decide where she wanted to be. And I thought she chose well. I didn't want to choose for her. You know, if she asked me, I would have, like, where do you think? I would have shared, but I wanted her to choose. And she, to me, she chose the one I would have chose. <laughs> uh, especially based on where she is living. Okay. But Janice, you started a new job in the tribe for the tribe. Woohoo! Lucky, lucky Hoopa Valley. Yeah. Is it in Hoopa Valley or is it in the Iraq Peru? Ooh, it's exciting. Congratulations, and I know you'll be fabulous, right? You'll be so fabulous, and they're only going to benefit from you being there. I'm so happy for you. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. <laughs> Isn't that funny? I talked about you as a boss. <laughs> I'm just like, well, of course. Yeah, so Janice, you had the retrograde Saturn in the 11th house. So uh, Aquarius energy rules the 11th house. So we were looking, you can kind of apply that to um, your 11th house themes with the Saturn in Aquarius. And of course, look for your Aquarius ruled house to kind of see exactly what part of the life is getting activated. Oh my God, you're an elder advocate. Are you kidding me? That is such a blessing. <laughs> oh my God. And Saturn is our el the elder one you know it's the mastery it's the the wisdom this is a great and fabulous time for you to start this new job you're returning right and then remember your north node in 12th house taurus want to get all that elder wisdom start putting it into the earth <laughs> return it to the land Get the stories. And you already have a son who's an amazing archivist. <laughs> Not amazing. Okay, Nancy, I think my Saturn is in the second house retro. I think it is too, Nancy. Sagittarius, retrograde, second house. So that speaks a lot to the Taurus energy because Taurus rules second house. So um, when we get to uh, Uranus here in a moment, um, let your ears turn up the volume. <laughs> Yeah, second house, what's in the store? So I want you to pay attention to what I have to share about Uranus and Taurus. Plus, Mercury goes direct in Taurus. And Taurus is uh, talking to you about your second house. Sagittarius is the energy, the costume that it's wearing. And then Saturn is that you know part of ourselves that's getting a reboot, a refresh. Okay, so... Here we go. Let's start looking. Let's start breaking down the chart. Okay, so the first thing I noticed, of course, is the moon has moved to Leo. It was in Cancer, changed signs, it's in Leo. And it's bringing in some fire energy where we were blessed with Mercury going direct with the water element. Now we're going into the fire element. Now this is going to um, make sense 
more sense. Um, yes, thank you, Teresa. Material, security, worth, value, money, safety, security, all those wonderful things, deservingness, all those good things. And then of course, apply the Sagittarius energy on top of that um, as a way of life, a spiritual path, a spiritual walk. Um, okay, so fire energy, and that's going in right into Chiron. So the moon at our core root self, Leo, the lover, um, uh, and Leo energy is very powerful for this retrograde in Sat uh, Saturn in Aquarius because Leo is the opposite sign of Aquarius. The moon is holding court there, meaning your, your core root self is now being activated by the polarity or the completion energy of the Saturn in Aquarius. Saturn or, or Aquarius energy is not complete without its polarity partner, and that's Leo, right? So this, so now I'm seeing that uh, the moon is in a full moon type of position, meaning it's opposite Saturn. So they're they're coming into a bigger, deeper harmony, and it's bringing something big up around Leo themes. Leo themes, and this is the crescent moon, meaning it's refining. So this also tells me that the Saturn retrograde is about refining something within you that you will need shifted in order for your future Aquarius to match what your, your inner mastery is capable of in your core self. So you're returning to your core mastery energy through creativity, love, self-expression, playfulness, fun, Remember, Leo is the fun sign. <laughs> it's the one that's kind of like flamboyant and big hair and bright colors and, you know, wants to be seen. It's the star. Star of the show. The, the sun rules the sign of Leo. And we have, so then we go, okay, what's the sun doing? If Leo is now a really powerful piece of Saturn going retrograde for the next five months in Aquarius. The sun is here at 14 degrees, Gemini on June 4th. Now, why is that important? It is important because the sun's polarity point is the location of where the earth is. Where are we living? We're living on the earth. The earth is now at 14 degrees Sagittarius, the opposite. 14 degrees Sagittarius is the location in the cosmos of the greater tractor or the galactic center, which is 27 degrees Sag. But the 14th degree, where the Earth on Saturn retrograde is, is moved into, is the magnetic attraction field. So you, your Earth body, is getting a upgrade in your ability to attract at a great level. <laughs> the great attractor. What are you attracting? Now, Nancy, this is interesting for you because you've got your Saturn in Sagittarius, at the, you know, and, and the Earth is in Sagittarius. So the Earth is actually moving through that Sagittarius world second house of yours with your Saturn retrograde. That makes sense. Your Earth body, right? Sun is out here shining its bright soul light, solar light. But the Earth is the material self, the body, the earthly existence. That is at the great attractor point. And what's our human body is capable of? They're capable of manifesting <laughs> what they need, right? They're like, if you, like, if somebody is like, you know, lost on Mount Everest or something, that body is going to do whatever it can to survive. Like the body itself is fine tuned for survival. If you're sick, the immune system goes off, right? Um, you know, the body wants to be well, it wants to live a long time, it wants to be uh, healed and healthy and strong. So you're getting this earth body ability to attract to you a bigger picture of what uh, you dream of as your life. And Saturn is saying, well, let me help you with that. I'm in the future right now. What needs to change today? So listen to your earth body and you can even address your body, like body, what is 
the big picture of our ultimate joy. Show me, right? show me, give me signs, right? And your body might tingle in a certain area and find out about that part of the body, right? I look at it like, okay, if I get a tingle in my shoulder, I know Gemini rolls the shoulders in astrology. So then I'll go to my Gemini rolled house and I'll go, wow, that's my first house. That's my actual physical body. I'm going to like really be super hyper focused on making sure my body is happy. <laughs> so find uh, where that energy is. Ask some new questions. Ask some bigger optimizer questions. How can you optimize? Okay. So I thought, uh, let's take a look at some of the Sabian symbols. Oh, one other thing I wanted to point out, because Saturn is in the sign of Aquarius, it's ruled, Aquarius is ruled by Uranus. Uranus is here, 16 degrees Taurus. And the 16th degree of Taurus is um, what's called, it's the Sabian symbol of a battle of swords and torches. So this is talking about um, the battle of air and fire, torches, fire, swords or airs. So here, I'm going back to, I'm going to just stop the screen share for a minute. I want to show you. In the tarot deck, <laughs> back to the tarot, we have two suits that are aligned with swords and torches. The Ace of Swords and all the minors, right? From the Ace to the Tenth. The journey of the swords. That is the air element, battle of the swords. What are they battling? They're battling the torches, the wands, and their journey. Ace to the to number nine or number ten, rather. So now we have the battle of swords and torches. What does this mean? So Swords are the intellect, right? Air element. What's happening with um, Mercury? It rules the mind, right? Uranus rules the crown. Saturn is in the crown sign, right? And the wands are about growth and they're fire. What, what grows is something that's inspired with passion. So the, the wands are about passion fire, spirit, growth. So that's what we're battling, the intellect and the spirit. <laughs> Isn't that wild? So now with that awareness, what do we do? Let's go back to the chart. It will tell us. <laughs> All right. So 16 degrees, Uranus. It, whenever Uranus, the outer planets change a degree, it's a big deal. So uh, Uranus changes a degree. The battle of swords and torches. This is an old, old battle, kind of the good and evil battle. But really, it's the battle of our intellect versus our spirit. Why are they even battling in the first place? <laughs> These are the questions we've got to ask. So we go to Saturn to resolve the, the battle. And Saturn is showing up as a Sabian symbol image of a hydrometer. What's a hydrometer? It measures um, hydra, water, right? Emotions, consciousness. It's a meter, it's measuring consciousness on the planet or within the self or measuring your emotional consciousness into the future. If it stays at a, at a maybe a dysfunctional level here, it's gonna continue creating that into your future. If you change the emotional consciousness and measure it at maybe something that brings you more joy, it's going to start creating that as your field for the future possibilities and opportunities and all the life. Remember, manifesting. Where's the earth? The great attractor. What are you attracting? You're attracting your biggest hopes and dreams, Sagittarius. Okay. So I thought that that was really interesting. And the crescent moon of uh, here in Leo is called the clown's moon. And so the clowns represent, and especially when we look at the mercury going direct and the native woman selling the beads, right? So we already are aware of indigenous wisdom that we are being guided to connect. Please, please 
connect with the indigenous wisdom around you, the land you live on, the people of the land, or some other people around the world you resonate with. Uh, fill your mind with their wisdom because um, the sacred clown had a major role to play in the tribe. And I know there's more that can speak to that than me, but I want to point, you know, look at the Hayoka, look at the sacred clowns. Talk to people who know about their role. It's a sacred role that um, humanity actually needs to function at a higher level, especially of emotional awareness. Okay. The clown brings in, um, it brings in this, you know, our ability to truly be human. We are emotional based creatures. And so at the 13th degree of Leo, you're gonna love this. <laughs> the Sabian symbol is a human soul awaits opportunity. <laughs> the clown's moon is saying, yes, your human soul is awaiting the opportunity to be joy in the body again. I think that's what's really fallen in our planet is that the human soul kind of got pushed out of the body. Um, and then we suffer through lack, limitation, and broken heart energies, right? So the human soul is awaiting an opportunity to rejoin the body through love, laughter, and seeing um, the, the spirit material world through the eyes of the heart. Okay. Um, oh, another cool thing is, again, we pointed out that the waxing crescent, Leo moon, is in a fire trying to Chiron. And this is um, Chiron's at 15 degrees, which is the midpoint of, of the sign of Aries. So any 15, 14 degree is called the midpoint. And this is one of my favorite Sabian symbols, um, maybe because it's the Sabian symbol of my North Node in Aries, <laughs> it could be. But this is uh, known as fairies dancing in the setting sun, meaning the battle is over. The war of suffering is done. The fairies have returned and they're dancing in the setting sun. Like this is like, whew, the magic is back. <laughs> the magic has come back. We want to invite our, those fairies into our world, into our human soul. And to me, as I research like the fae and, you know, who, what is the original essence of humanity? And I keep getting, it's an angelic race. And the fairy, the fae are the cousins to the human angelics. And so our cousins are dancing in the setting sun and they're saying, come back, come back. Remember we used to play together. <laughs> and so that human soul is awaiting that opportunity over this next five month retrograde experience to move into that direction. Now I'm going to wrap this up with two things. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Um, when you go to the polarity point, because remember the, the sun or the moon is in a, a, an opposition to Saturn, and I call that the full moon. Um, when we go to 25 degrees Leo as a polarity point to Saturn at 25 degrees Aquarius, it is, um, you know how I've been talking about rainbows? <laughs> the Sabian symbol is after a heavy storm. Storm. A rainbow appears. That's the promise. The, the, the Ark of the Covenant promise. The rainbow appears. So the, the gods of the skies are speaking, but saying, you know what? A lot of storms have, are done. They're clearing. What we're kind of experiencing now is a residual echo. Don't be connecting to the echo. It is no longer here is not part of our future. What our future is saying, it's based on, an, it's an emotional future based on how much we can dance with the fairies in the West. <laughs> how much we can await this human soul that wants to, to, to dance with them, right? And the battle of the torches and the swords, it's done. It's done. Doesn't that make you happy? It makes me happy. <laughs> Nancy asks, so will this happen during the retrograde or after? So Nancy, this is um, the moment that Saturn goes 
retrograde. So it's an imprint of, a, of energy that's in play for the next five months. So this is kind of like I, the focus over the next five months of that's how long Saturn will be retrograde. He goes direct on October 23rd and the, the degree is, everybody needs a phone book <laughs> called an ephemeris is 18 degrees Aquarius. So it's a four degree shift, four degree shift. Or no, I'm sorry, a um, six degree shift, right? No, 25, five, two, oh, seven degree shift. <laughs> Can I add and subtract? I don't know. So it's a seven degree shift. Now what's interesting about seven degrees is Saturn makes a square every seven years. Uranus takes seven years to go through a sign, a seven-year inch, inch, right? The sevens. So I know some of you got that seven as your lucky number. Yeah, imprint of the energy in play. Definitely, Jana, you got it. Exactly. So this is kind of giving us the wisdom to follow. All we have to do is align, merge, find it in our chart, do, you know, just connect in some way. So the polarity point again, is that the heavy storm has ended and the rainbow appears, right? We love that, right? Isn't that cool? And we talked about on the new moon in Gemini, the Mercury in square to Saturn. You know, when he goes direct, he's squaring. So, and that's all about the inner rainbow, like developing your inner rainbow and that's what shines out. So remember on Mercury going direct, the day before we had Venus at six degrees and we had Mars at six degrees. One day later, Mars has moved to the eighth degree and Venus has moved to the eighth degree. So we're having an eight, eight gateway and all right, who wants to shout it out? What's the power of the eight, eight gateway? You're right, lion's gate, woohoo! So circle lion's gate. There's something big coming on Lionsgate in regards to the Saturn retrograde experience. So we have Mercury is delivering us a gift on the 6-6 gateway. So we want to be talking to Mercury that day, right? Abundance, that's right, a Teresa. And on the 8-8 gateway, um, we have a gift from Saturn. And this is all coming to us from Mars and Venus. How nice of them, the lovers. <laughs> so um, I thought that was another really interesting thing. And so their um, they're Sabian symbols, you're gonna like this. Mars is a crystal gazer. So our inner masculine energy is taking a crystal, right? And gazing into its, its information, its records. Something that can, uh, Green does. I love it. So what he does, I don't have my, let me show you what he does, but you need a clear quartz skull. Um, here's a little, one of my fluorite skull that he sits with me and we chat about the cosmos. But say I had my crystal. You want to look into the crown chakra of your crystal skull, if you have one, and you want to gaze into his crown. And, you know, that's, where you're gonna get the downloads of that skull's records or that crystal's records. Um, so we have the crystal gazer, right? So you can get, use your crystals as a healing tool. And Venus is a Christmas tree decorated. So I thought that was really nice. Like Venus, our inner feminine is offering you like that, you know, if you are someone who celebrates this Christmas or, or any of the winter holidays, you know, how does he feel, right? And how, you know, maybe how did you feel as a child in that time too? So a Christmas tree decorated is all about celebrating the, the joy of the season. So Venus is saying, celebrate, enjoy, be inspired by this Saturn retrograde. And there's lots for us to be excited about, right? So Teresa, she wrote it down, nice. Yeah, so 88 Gateway, on Lionsgate 6-6, six, six, which is coming on Monday. And we're in a year six, which is a really healing and nurturing year of the mother, the teacher, the guide. So Saturn might pique your interest to say, all right, hey, are you a teacher, a healer, a guide, or do you want to be in the future? Now's the time to start developing your craft 
And Saturn retrograde, especially if you like Janice and Nancy were born with the retrograde Saturn, there's a lot you already know. There's a lot of mastery and wisdom as an old soul that you already came in. And I know that those two are actively engaged with their old soul powers. <laughs> I want to make sure that the rest of you are too. So Saturn says, what do you need for your future that will attract what you want, the big picture of your life? Those are the things we want to start asking. All right, so I'm going to end our nighttime astro live for tonight. We'll be, uh, I will be back next week. Um, and we're going to see, I wrote down next week. The topics are, of course, I'm going to, the 6-6 six, six gateway, so I want to like look at that. Uh, and will give us some more insights. Also the waxing Virgo moon. So that's also good for us to get into action, create an action plan on the 6-6 gateway. And then I'm gonna, on the following Wednesday, it's a Venus conjunct Uranus on 6-11. So I wanna look at that chart and tell you about what those messages are. So you can take it into your beautiful uh, dream landscape to talk to your angels and guides and get the healings and the teachings and the awareness that you need for a better tomorrow. All right. Thank you so much for being here and joining the nighttime live. I'm having so much fun with these and I'm glad. Um, this was an idea that was given to me by our very own Sherry Cliff Taylor. So Sherry, thank you so much. I'm really enjoying um, coming in at nighttime. It's really fun. So, uh, Watch the video, I'll make it into a YouTube. You can share it around with your friends. Uh, please do comment with more questions and I'll get to those. And thank you so much for listening and watching and playing, getting your charts out and uh, contributing in the, in the wonderful ways that you all do in support of each other. Really love that, it makes my day and my night. So uh, I'll be checking in uh, tomorrow, see if there's more new comments. And happy and feel free to post in the group any questions you might that might come up as you wake up refreshed tomorrow. But we do have a um, Mercury going direct on June 3rd, Saturn going retrograde. Oh, on Saturday. And guess what? He retrogrades on the day of his day. Saturdays are the Saturn days. So he's retrograding on his own day of the week, which is so Saturn. <laughs> All right. Thank you again, and I hope everybody has a wonderful evening. Good night.